So let's let's get started. Uh, before we jump uh, into the webinar, I would like to take a moment and to introduce you to CloudFresh. CloudFresh is a global Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partner. And, uh, we are trusted by more than 1,400 customers uh, from over 50 countries. By working with CloudFresh, you can get access to value-added benefits such as special discounts, professional supports, flexible payments, and so much more. We are proud we have worked with top-tier companies in various industries. Uh, over the years, companies such as uh, Deloitte, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Vodafone, and many other have chosen CloudFresh for their cloud solution. And now I would like to ask whether any participants of this webinar are currently using Google Workspace. Please type uh, a plus sign in the chat if you're already using Google Workspace or type minus if you are not using it. Alexander, I'm sorry to interrupt you really quickly while we are waiting for the people to respond. Could you please reshare the screen uh, once again because the slides are a bit cut off? Okay. Thank you. Um, there is a lot of people using the Google Workspace, right? Yep. To hear that, I hope that will be some interesting question during our conversation today. So I think it is still cut off, um, please for me. Uh, perhaps I can share the screen if you don't mind. Oh, it will be great. Uh, yeah, but uh, let me. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, so uh, I see that there are more pluses. Thank you for sharing. Okay. And um, let's now turn your attention to the benefits of uh, working with CloudFresh. Uh, for both um, existing and new Google Workspace customers. And uh, as for the new uh, Google Workspace uh, users, we can provide free trial, cost optimization, and professional services on each step of your work. Uh, for example, it could be migration, implementation, and training uh, for end users and administrators. Um, if your business is already using Google Workspace, uh, you can take uh, advantage of cost savings, license optimization, and special discounts from us. Uh, so your team are, um, will be get all necessary information from uh, our company, and we are all set to provide you with the most successful and cost uh, effective Google Workspace uh, usage. The next uh, part, I would like to dive into two uh, sections. Uh, the first is an overview uh, of the available plans, and the second, what you will get when upgrading to more advanced version of Google Workspace. So if we are talking about business starter, standard, and plus plans, uh, they 
primarily provide value to end users. It's your colleagues uh, who work daily within Google Workspace ecosystem. So if you are using um, business starter, for example, and you plan to upgrade to business standard, you will get uh, several key benefits. It could be uh, increased storage uh, space up to two terabytes, video meetings recording in Google Meet, and um, increase the number of participants in meetings to 150. If we are talking about um, Business Plus plan, you gain even more features. It could be storage increases to five terabytes, the ability to host video meetings uh, up to 500 participants, and additionally, you get Google Vault for secure data retention and recovery. And um, if we're talking about the enterprise plan, it offers even more advanced features for administrators and your company. The main benefits of uh, this plan include DLP, uh, data loss prevention, mobile device management, and security center for enhanced security management. These features allow companies to fully control their Google Workspace ecosystem and efficiency, manage security and productivity. And now uh, Ilya will explain further about this. We will take a closer look at enterprise plan, which provides more advanced security uh, capabilities. Ilya, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. And hi, everyone. That's a pleasure for me to meet you uh, today and talk about the lovely things in Google Workspace. So, because I'm the technical specialist about everything uh, in Google Workspace, so I like to talk about the admin console, the things about the admin console, so the security part, the benefits you will get when you are increasing your plan to the enterprise. So let's start and I will shortly describe like the best features you will get. And this is all about the security, about your comfort, and especially about the comfort of managing your enterprise, your business. It doesn't even matter how many like people you have. So from the small business to the big enterprises, you will get the same solid security uh, for everyone. So let's start. I will show um, small workflows for the admins, for the security guys, um, so how they work and how the Google Workspace Enterprise will make their life just easier, make their productivity, increase their productivity and, and everything else around that. All right, so let's go on. First of all, we have we are in the admin console, yeah, and for everyone who are not familiar with that, please answer your question in the chat. But uh, what we have at the start, so the alert center, our center of everything about security in Google Workspace, that's the centralized space for the administrators, for the responsible people to have the knowledge about your people your workspace and things happens in your workspace. So we have different uh, rules triggered, different things happens in Google Workspace. That's where we have our alerts, uh, the notifications, like something happened, somebody shared the file externally, somebody logged in from the different computer than the usual one, it will be in your alert center. So let's see the examples. Uh, like we have the main data exported, for example, so the export initiated, the activity rule triggered when somebody shared the file externally, and the data loss prevention, which Alexander mentioned already, 
here's the bunch of the triggers there yeah so let's imagine mm, let's not imagine i will show you uh, data loss prevention rule triggered so what we have um, drive file modify it yeah which triggered the label lock so somebody tried to share file externally and we see the that the block external sharing uh, accepted and alert happened here so what we have to do we have to investigate the situation right we as a responsible administrator for example first of all we can give this the severity status so high medium and low one then the status so we started investigation it will be in progress and we can assign this for the responsible uh, person let's imagine it's me yep apply so now now i will get the alert the notification uh, on the email and i am the responsible person i need to investigate the alert i have the document id which have been triggered to and i will investigate so i clicked on the investigation tool and the investigation tool is the centralized space for our lock events yeah the lock events means that we lock everything happens in google workspace with your users with your data with everything around that so and i can see that action completed something happened so i click on the description and see more detailed information about that all right i see that the data source is drive and someone tried to uh, share the file with internal label externally so we have been alerted and the sharing have been blocked but what happened i need to first of all what i need to do the first reaction i need to block user to operate this file right let's imagine this is some data leak trying to happen all right i'm copying the resource id and creating a new investigation so i delete the previous one let's say yeah and choose the new source drive lock events let's say add a new condition you can combine condition you can mix them do whatever you want with that conditions and i choose the document id which i already copied so I paste it and search. All right, wait a second. Yeah, the search finished. And what I have, I have a bunch of logs with this file. So which ID we uh, found. And I see the title that this is some connectivity SVG file. All right, I need to block to prevent user of uh, sharing this file of operating this file what i can do and this is the one of the best feature in google workspace enterprise plan yeah you can operate the file from the admin console so in business starter in standard uh, tariff plans and even in enterprise standard you cannot like directly operate the file if you are not the owner of the file yeah, but in enterprise, so we do not want to bother your users with like email them or message them, please cut off the accesses or something. We are the admin, we need to do our job. Actions, and here's the features I can do with this file. Add users, audit file permissions, change the owner of the file, completely disable, download, print or copying the file, or quickly, remove the users, right? Uh, remove like everyone who have the access to this file to make it as secure as possible. But now I want to uh, audit the file permissions. Okay, so I see the bunch of tabs here and I want, let's say, to manage the permissions. So I see the file yeah, and I see who have the access to this file. And of course, I can change the access level right also i can manage the people who have the file and share it drives and links but here's the trick i will show you um let's get back to the investigation tool and let's say it's um, not only the one file which id we have it's a bunch of files yeah and we need to manage all of them so 
I choose just the drive log events. It will search and find the different files. So you can see the different titles, what we have, and we have a bunch of different logs as well. All right. So we select the actions and audit the file permissions. Yeah, and we see here is the different person, different people, and they have access to this file. And from here, we can manage everything we need and also the company available files manageable there. So let's say somebody shared the file by the link and open to everyone. We can close this from the admin console. So this is one of the feature we have in the admin console. So let's say we change the permissions and now we can delete alert or say this is closed. That's all. Yeah, so we fixed the problem. We can see the alert history. So we started the investigation. We investigated and closed the options there. So this is one of the features. What else do we have here? We have a pretty clear uh, overview of your data and your privacy and the other things in your security in your Google workspace. Like you can choose the data region where you can files could be stored. This is the US or uh, the Europe either. Yeah, so you can encrypt your file, uh, your files, your operations with your own keys, for example. Yeah, the encryption keys. This is called the client side encryption and you can click it and you can see which external keys now used yeah and you can add a new one so you can have your external key provider and you can hold your own keys and it will be like end-to-end -end encryption with your own keys so you hold your data you control everything and nobody knows uh what you're gonna do with your private data yeah so it could be sensitive it could be some contracts it could be some documents uh you can use enterprise plus to control it and encrypt it with uh, Google Workspace natively. All right, so what else do we have? The interesting thing what we have is the uh, context aware access. So this is also the cool feature which works uh, completely with the advanced device management, yeah? mobile endpoint and device management. You can assign different levels of the accesses. Yep. You can choose the application and assign the different levels. Which levels? Let's see. Create a new one. And some test demo. And here are the conditions. And this is pretty cool there. So you have a bunch of different conditions and you can assign it to different people, to different application and manage their options to log in your Google workspace. So you can choose the IP subnet they can use to log in. You can choose the location, so it could be the different countries. Uh, you can choose the device which is admin approved or company owned. So you can have the list of company owned devices uh, to store your corporate devices. Um, so the devices with at least screen password protected protection, yeah. So you can choose the operating system with different version and different access levels uh, as well, which you can combine with. So it's not only about the UI controls, it's also the common expression language the Google use for the more advanced context conditions. Yeah, and you can assign these things to the different people, to different devices, uh, etc. So to manage everything around your devices, not only the logs or files or something, you can secure everything starting from the device and user workspace uh, and ending with the email and user encryption. So this is pretty it about like the top level overview of the enterprise features and i think i'm done with my demo part and give me a second guys to switch
to the presentation, right? Okay, here it is. I will just show uh, my slide. Yeah, so what we have, uh, the CloudFresh has the professional services around all of the things I've been showing. Yeah, so the Google Workspace migration implementation, we do the security audits, especially uh, this is good for the big enterprises. So we do the audit, for example, we plan the optimization of your Google Workspace and then implement the things. So what we have here, the security audit, the mobile device management review and the advanced data protection. This is about the enterprise version users who want to upgrade from business, let's say, or it's the new users, or this is for the already using uh, organization who want to improve their usage, their utilization of the Google Workspace. So you pay for Google Workspace Enterprise, you want to use it as much as possible, and we are here to help you with that. So thank you for this. Uh, and guys, I'm waiting for your questions in the chat and ready to answer at the end on the Q&A sessions and passing my word to Dominic, right? Let me stop the presentation and guys, please share one. Thanks. Dominic uh, will walk in us through Gemini to Google Workspace. Thank you, Lia, by the way, for your expertise. Dominic, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you, sounds good. Um, pleasure to be here. And again, thank you for CloudFresh for inviting Google to this webinar. Um, I read a lot of the comments in regards to the existing workspace users. So um, good to be amongst some of our customers. Um, and thank you all for being here. Uh, and to the non-believers, uh, also welcome. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll shine a bit of a bright light onto workspace today, uh, specifically Gemini. Um, as you can see on the slide, my name is Dominic. I have been at Google for uh, five years um, and specifically worked with the workspace tool over um, a year and a half. So it's been a bit of a journey. Um, with me on the call is Victoria. She's the customer engineer for workspace and Google Cloud. She'll have um, an introduction of her own, but um, I just wanted to say that we come as a, as a duo pack, as a team, uh, and we tend to uh, tackle these uh, webinars together. So um, without further ado, um, the uh, Gemini era has begun. Uh, I always smile because we've rebranded Gemini a couple of times. Some of you may recall it as Duet AI. Um, some of you may recall it as uh, other tools. Uh, but nonetheless, it is it is the uh, Gemini uh, in workspace uh, that we're calling it. So when we look at uh, generative AI and we ask this question in you know webinars and events, we all oftentimes um, get mixed answers, and that is understandable because AI um, in every context has its own definition. But what do we define AI as when it comes to Gemini? Well, we think of it as your collaborative partner. So uh, when you think of workspace, you think of the idea that it was built to collaborate with your teammates, with your fellow colleagues, your employees, um, everybody within and outside of your company. Um, and generative AI, specifically Gemini, is an added layer where you get to collaborate with some of the amazing AI tools that we have here at Google. When we look at the product features, we specifically mention a couple, um, which you will see a demo of today, and we're quite happy to show you um, a, a sort of a live uh, how it works. Um, but we specifically highlight how Gemini can help you write, can help you create uh, images uh, can help you organize some of the uh, presentations or slides or, or sheets that you are creating. And most importantly, how it can help you connect uh, with fellow teammates, how it can make you look a bit better, sound a bit better. Um, and we'll show you some of those features um, today as well. When we look at the help you write feature, um, I'm not sure if uh, there is a lot of experience with it here, but it is built across. Um, all the uh, the the uh, collaboration tools. So first and foremost, it um, is built into Google Docs. 
Um, so for example, as you can see on the screen, and as I am sure Victoria will show you, um, here's a, a demo of how you can create a, an appealing job uh, description for a sales representative at your company within just a few clicks. So help you write can, can help you generate some of the middle content or some of the, the filler language uh, in between the, the most important uh, bits. Same thing with Gmail. Um, if you are on the go, if you're trying to quickly write an email or respond with an email, whether you're on your mobile phone or a mobile device, or whether you are on your laptop, um, Gemini can help you write, can help you create a response or generate an email, make it formal, less formal, um, and save you some of that valuable time while you're on the go and while you're uh, running around uh, like myself trying to sell <laughs> Gemini or so workspace. The other things that we, we um, sort of present and that we show is the um, image generation. So specifically within slides, one of my favorite features is creating a, a, an entry slide uh, or a couple of entry slides with some of those um, AI generated images. Um, I uh, try to incorporate some of these as part of sort of a natural flow of um, any presentation. Uh, and it does help me save a lot of time when trying to uh, get ready for customer calls or presentations or webinars. Um, it can really help you at the glance or at the, the click of a finger generate some appealing um, on topic images. When we look at Google Sheets, um, whether your project planner or your company is focused on uh, perhaps a lot of um, event organizations or overall you have teams that need to generate, uh, you know, uh, uh, project plans or, or conference plans or whatever it may be, um, the Help Me Organize in Google Sheets um, can really help you get the most out of that tool and generate really complex uh, project plans within a couple of seconds. So again, I, I hope we get to see that today on the demo, you know, but if not, you do have a quick glance at it here uh, today. Um, when, um, as we said, when we look at the connectivity tools um, helping you connect, we have the uh, backgrounds in Google Meet. Uh, this is a tool that can um, help you sort of look better, look more on brand, um, and especially if you are going into calls with clients of a specific industry, you, know, you could basically utilize Gemini in Meet to create a background of that industry, um, which I think is a really cool feature. Same thing with the enhanced lighting in Meet. Um, you know, a lot of us, I specifically am based out of Dublin. We do not get a lot of light. Uh, so this is a feature that we tend to uh, uh, tend to look at uh, quite a bit. Um, and again, uh, these are features to present you um, as somebody who's representing your company in the best way possible. One of my favorites, uh, and this is the um, sound audio uh, cancellation feature, again, has a built-in layer of AI. And the main goal is to uh, help you sound better, help you uh, connect in meetings uh, from, you know, a, a train or perhaps a busy uh, cafe, uh, but nonetheless make you seem like you're in an isolated room um, and able to take these calls and perform. Um, and lastly, uh, we look at the translation keys. And we usually get a lot of questions here. Um, I'd be happy to answer some of these questions at the end, but the uh, translate in real time uh, is a, a Gemini feature, AI feature built directly into Google Meet that aims at translating um, uh, live conversations between you and fellow, uh, fellow teammates or customers, whoever it may be, where the details matter. Um, so if it is an important call where you really have to iron details out uh, and you have some traction between the languages spoken, you could use uh, Gemini to translate for you and also take notes for you in Google Docs after the call, um, as well as uh, summarize some of those notes for, notes for everybody else that needs to be involved in the future of that project or whatever it may be. When we look at the added value, so who is this for? Right. Um, I mean, you could be looking at your engineering teams and you could be saying these guys, they're coding all day. They're, they're, they're not going to need this tool. Maybe they only send two to three emails a week. Um, and when we look at the most common use cases, we look at sort of four different pillars. We look at the marketing use case. 
Um, so kind of the CMO aspect of the business, uh, we look at how we can help your teams be more creative with image generation, with uh, product tagging, with product descriptions. When you think of a marketer, think of all the jobs they have to do that um, simply go back to writing, editing, um, and creating uh, 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 creatives. Uh, so that could be a really a good use case. You've already seen a job description uh, a demo a second ago. So we look at the CHRO, so the recruitment side of the business. Um, you uh, have, uh, or you will hopefully uh, see a bit more in the demo how it can help the um, the the uh, sales side of the business. So whether you're a seller, you need to write a lot of emails. You need to work at scale, um, and uh, perhaps uh, you know work at a, a rapid pace. Um, this could really be a, a good use case for, for you and your business. Um, when we look at the, the two different um, uh, SKUs, we um, have Gemini within business and we have Gemini within enterprise. There are differences. I'm not going to go into the details, but it doesn't matter which SKU you are on or which subscription model you have. You are um, more than welcome to avail to test uh, Gemini with uh, Cloudfresh as your partner and obviously uh, with the support of Google, helping you sort of automate or helping you learn how you can get the most out of your processes uh, today with Gemini. One thing I have to mention just before I wrap up my section is the privacy and security because we do get a lot of questions. So again, as with Workspace, then with Gemini, your data is your data. Um, there is no ads ever. Um, you are in control of that data and all the apps are um, always accessible. We have a 99.9% .9 service level agreement, um, which uh, is uh, something that we pride ourselves on here at Workspace, here at Gemini, here at Google. When we look at the architecture uh, that we have built, that we have shared with the world, it's the same architecture that we as a company sit on. Um, and again, um, we how to be proud and mindful of the fact that we are quite a safe uh, environment for you, for your data, for your company. When you think of Gemini, when you think of all the data, the prompts, the questions that you put in, uh, you can rest assured that we do not use that data to uh, train our models. Uh, we have something called the customer data boundary, meaning that all of the data uh, and all of the prompts that you use Gemini for, all of the tasks that you use Gemini for is your data. Um, and we as Google will not have access to it, will not train our models based off of it, um, and we will not uh, sort of benefit in any way, shape or form. So it's important that you also have that understanding. Again, I saw a lot of Workspace customers, and I'm sure you've chosen Workspace as part of your tech stack because of the security, because of the privacy. But all that, again, is layered on top of Gemini. So you can, as we said, rest assured, that is a tool that we pride ourselves and that we keep um, secure. Um, with that being said, um, thank you all so much for listening. Um, I really appreciate your, your time, uh, your, uh, uh, you bearing with me. And I'm going to pass it over to Victoria, who is the uh, amazing customer engineer, uh, and who will show you a bit of a demo. Thank you very much. Dominique, thank you so much for informative presentation and uh, it gave us much to think about. Uh, I just have one two question to you. you. You said about Gemini business and enterprise so, um, without details, but I want to know, is it possible to purchase a mix of this um, SKU? For example, if uh, I want to buy few Gemini business and a uh, few uh, Gemini enterprise licenses. Um, I think, Victoria, since you have the microphone, you could uh, potentially answer that question. Okay, okay. And we have some questions about the Gemini in our chat. Uh, can we provide answer now for them? So, uh, some of them, can you hear me okay? Yep. Cool. So, yes. some of them, I actually just was spinning my demo a bit differently. The ones about meat, I'm going to show it instead Perfect. of hearing. Uh, but for the licenses, I'm pretty sure you can have a mix like with the workspace licenses. But to be honest, no one asked me that before, so I would have to double check. But I don't see why not, because the way you're assigning the licenses of Gemini, it's exactly the same way. So a user would have one workspace license and one Gemini license, and it's up to the admin to decide. So I don't see why not. Thank you. Thank you. I, I also take a couple of questions, because I, I, as you said, Alexander, maybe we should answer them now. 
Um, I'll try not to be too selective. A um, couple of questions on languages. Um, they always, we always get these questions and that's fine. We're building out the language capabilities. Um, we, in terms of Central Eastern Europe, specifically Ukrainian, Russian, Polish, Czech, um, we don't have dates as of yet. We are quite hopeful that this is something that we can speak about next year uh, and that hopefully we'll be bringing a, a bit of good news to the region. Myself and Victoria, we always provide feedback that those languages are needed, uh, that we work with customers that are very excited to uh, use those languages. Uh, but as part of that answer, you're more than welcome to test it in English and use the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, translate feature uh, within that. So um, it can perform so ta some tasks in your native languages. Um, in terms of the Google Meet, can it write reports of meetings? Uh, yes, it can. It can summarize your meetings. It can take notes for you if you like, if this is something that you have um, enabled. So uh, absolutely. Um, um, and then we shall take uh, maybe one last question. Um, is there a transcribing option for the Google Meet and what languages is that available in? Uh, Victoria, perhaps we have uh, a share out or do we have any details on the actual language combinations? I know there's a lot of language combinations, but as far as the details go, not entirely uh, sure here. I would have to double check the languages that are available now because they keep adding new ones. And as Dom just said, like some features are working in the languages, even though we're not officially launched yet. But for example, if we're looking at the transcription, let me actually, let me take a step back. So hello, everyone. I did not introduce myself. So my name is Victoria. I'm a customer engineer at Google Cloud, and I'm also a workspace specialist in my team. So I have a short demo to show you. Let me just show my screen and I can walk you through um, throughout some of the questions that were asked only if I can find the correct one. Uh, I think this is the tab that I want to share. Yes. So I'm in my demo environment, OK? I just created the Meet while Dom was presenting. Just wanted to show you those two capabilities, which is the transcription of the meeting and the translated captions as well before I jump to the, the actual kind of sales scenario that I prepared. So for taking notes, we'll, we'll see at the end I'm hoping it's going to work. I have my microphone unmuted here, but it's super simple to enable. To enable. So basically, you have the, the, the little bubble here, and you just press Start Taking Notes. I did it already. So technically, what it should do now, sometimes with two meetings in the same time, it's challenging. So I'm not 100% sure it's going to work in this scenario. But in a regular meeting setting, what's going to happen is Gemini is going to be taking notes kind of similar as you would be taking a transcription of the meeting, but it's also going to provide you with a summary and any action items that might come up. So let's say you're in a one hour meeting, you're 10 minutes late or 15 minutes late. Oh, yes, I'm still in my call. Uh, let's say I'm late and the summary will actually tell me what was talked about before. So I think it's a super cool feature for the translated captions. Let's I saw a question about Ukrainian, so we're going to go with Ukrainian. So super simple to enable as well. Go to uh, We go to captions. We select English as the language of the meeting because that's what I'm speaking. And we want to translate the captions to Ukrainian. Please keep in mind, it's Ukrainian still in beta. So there's not a lot of languages that are available, but not all of them are fully launched yet. So there might be, you know, some um, some caveats where it doesn't translate properly, or maybe it's missing a few words. This is a great opportunity to also provide feedback as we're working about those um, on those features. But let's say I want to go like this, and I do not speak Ukrainian. So some of you who do can confirm if it makes sense what I'm talking about, if it translates it correctly. And it's super simple that everyone can set up their own. So let's say I want my subtitles in Ukrainian. Uh, Dom wants his subtitles in Polish. Someone else wants subtitles in English, uh, in Spanish, sorry. But the meeting is in English, for example. Or I can also change the language of the meeting. So like, I think it's very, very powerful feature. But let's go now to my other um, 
to my other demo. So today I'm going to, well, like show you the example as I was a sales representative, okay? So I prepared the scenario. I'm working in a company that's um, uh, producing medical devices, okay? I have some tasks that I need to perform and, you know, we have a new product launching. So I do want to write emails or proposals or answer emails, etc., about my new product, okay? But I don't want to swap the uh, tabs all the time because, you know, it's, it's saving me time if I can do it all in one window. So first of all, what I did, and it kind of goes back to what Dom mentioned as well, that it's not always, um, you know, the final result, but it's giving you a feeler of those words, like how long do you think it would take me to write this document? Even though I was the most knowledgeable person about the product, I would say realistically, at least 20 to 30 minutes. It's two pages with all the, you know, formatting, etc. It actually took me around 40 seconds. Why? Because I asked Gemini to generate this for me. Um, whenever working with Gemini, it's very important that you know how to prompt. What it means is the more detail you provide, the more accurate will be the result. So, for example, I put here quite a lot of details. So I wanted to generate a product document talking about the newest medical devices. We help patients going through chemotherapy. I want to include business and architecture site, talk about cost, proposed plan of distribution, how it will start in Ireland and then go further to Europe and then the award. And also I want to include a timeline for this, mention the creators and other team members. Great, so this was generated for me, okay, which is great. And that's not the only thing that side panel can do for you. I also generated some images, but what I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna just clear this because I have it already. It also provides a summary of this content. So in this scenario, I have only two pages, okay? And I'm the, the creator of the document and I know what it's talking about, but let's say I bring someone new to the team they can just read this one paragraph summary of what's in this document and they will know more of it. They can also look at different suggestions or ask questions, okay? So for example, what is the timeline of release? So what it's gonna do is gonna go through the document and what we have here, I can go and check if it's the same. So I have phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay, it's gonna research and development, clinical trials, everything in Ireland, great. And after I ask this first question, it also suggests others that I might want to ask, which is amazing because, you know, sometimes you don't think about the details that can be important. Let's now move on two sheets for a second. Uh, I'm just mindful of time and I want to show you a few more things. So as Dom mentioned, you know, you can use Gemini and Sheets to create and organize. And for the purpose of the demo, I really wanted to have, uh, you know, a list of customers, potential prospects that would be interested maybe in my uh, new machines, new devices. So then I can use it to kind of outreach. So, you know, we have here what, nine people with names, their name, email, different company, the role, industry, uh, where's the source from, when was the contact date. I'm not that creative to come up with the names and addresses and companies, etc. for nine people. So for this purpose, again, I can use Gemini. Um, again, this is only for a demo. I would imagine that a normal sales representative would have those. Uh, but I just want to show you how easy it is to generate. And it's also coming back to the context of what you're including in your prompt. So I wanted specific fields, okay? I wanted name, I wanted surname, email, the company, the role in the company and the industry. And then I added also, and anything else that might be useful. Why I added this? Because sometimes 
we don't think about important fields or information and Gemini because it is trained and you know fine-tuned for those scenarios it might know better to even say or you know maybe something I forgot about let's say um, I would forget the company name but I would ask about the role very likely that would actually generate the company name for me as well super quickly as well you just put it in, the table comes in, I'm happy, and then I just insert it in. It will also show me a source. The source is this uh, this spreadsheet. It didn't refresh the name, but this is this one, uh, because I wasn't referencing anything else. But why it's showing me the source as the actual document? Because another thing you can do is actually uh, reference other files that you have access to, very important, um, to create content. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go to a new doc, doc and we're going to create a customer proposal. So I'm going to do it a little bit more detailed, the prompt, as I was talking about like the important information that you should include. So I will write, I am Niels, um Sorry, just one second. Some... Okay, I'm a sales representative. Representative. See, I need uh, AI because I cannot spell. I'm a sales representative and I want to write a customer proposal um, about our new product i want it to be long enough to be included in a flyer pamphlet i guess because i don't know how to spell uh, and also have a version for a blog post reference and this is where the magic happens you don't need to swap the context i want to reference my product document that i just showed you before okay it's gonna take a few seconds uh, and it's gonna create me a sample what's also great if you're not happy you can regenerate it again um, the more details you provide in the prompt again the more accurate it's going to be so i have the pamphlet version i have the headline i have benefits great call to action play, um, placeholders for the logo and i also have a space for a blog post additional tips cool I'm very happy with this and I'm going to insert it in. But additionally, it also suggests me, you know, some questions that I can ask. So when you think about Gemini and especially side panel, I think you think about it as your assistant. So it's more like I want to write a customer proposal. Go, you, I need you to help me just go and fetch this document to reference if that makes sense that's how i see it at least and i can ask questions what is the target audience for example for this proposal and it's gonna go and generate it perfect but uh, what i wanted to show you now is actually uh i i'm just being mindful of time so now i just wanted to write an email okay so I'm going to use the side panel again. Oh, let me clear this so we can see it in action again. Write an invitation to executive, executive briefing. Um, write an invitation to executive briefing about new devices. And next. Tuesday at 2 p.m. reference 
again, I would want to reference now my customer proposal because, you know, it's more, the product document is more for internal use, whereas the customer proposal is more for the external, and I want this email to be sent to my customers, my prospects. So we're going to wait for it to generate. That's going to take always a few seconds, especially that it goes, checks the document. Okay, cool. Looks good to me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and insert this. And now I'm just going to, as I said, like this just gives you an overview. So I need to take this, put it in subject, this I can remove. Just some cosmetic stuff where this would take me probably 20 minutes to write again. What I wanted to show you, it's not a Gemini feature, but I think with those, it can be very, very powerful, especially for like kind of outsourcing and everything. I want to enable actually a mail merge. So what it happened, what it does, it's actually gonna have placeholders for names and um, email addresses. So I don't have to send a separate email to each person from my prospect list. So I'm just gonna go and select it. When I insert it in, it's asking me, where is the email? Okay, email is there, and I want to use the first name. And that's going to be how we're going to see it. So to John and John Smith at email. If I want to, I can use a second name, and I do want to because I want to add some stuff. Perfect. And I want to finish this. And now what we need to do. So see here, executive name. But actually, what we need to do is do add first name. And when the email is sent, it's going to actually pop automatically populate from the spreadsheet. So it just elevates it together. You know, like it's not only about Gemini. It's about the entire productivity and collaboration suite. How much time will it save you, even if the email is ready, to change the email, to change the name? Um, I don't know. Here I need to add location details, but that's not very important. Here I just need to change my signature and I'm all, almost ready to go. There are some placeholders, obviously, I need to fill out. Um, but my point is that you can just have it out ready. And then the last thing I wanted to show you briefly, I'm, I know we're like almost on time, but with those licenses, you don't only get Gemini for workspace, you also get the access to Gemini app, which you, we used to call Gemini.google.com. It's Gemini app now, which is your more, when you think about it, general assistant. It's not only about those collaboration scenarios, but it's also about, you know, a broader knowledge. So let me ask, what are the most famous companies? selling medical devices devices and what's very good to do a uh, uh, sales representative um, and i want to know what are the devices so that i can reference them in my sales Pitch. Let's see what's going to give me. So why I'm adding also that I'm a sales representative, because it's going to change the context in which the, the answer is going to be generated. Let's say I would say I'm an engineer, so it might talk more about the technicalities that are behind the actual devices. And just being on time, we're going to go super quickly to my meet that I started because I want to show you that it's actually providing you with updates. So this is the latest update that has been taken in the notes. That's all that was happening, the summary so far. So it got that I'm a customer engineer, I'm a specialist, Google Cloud, etc. And this is the latest update. So I can just also do this update just now so I don't need to refresh. I just go stop taking notes. It's going to be, yes, I want to stop taking notes. And what will happen, it's going to send it over to my email whenever like it's, the document is generated. So with this, I'm going to stop presenting. And back to you guys.
Thanks, Victoria, for sharing this Gemini magic with us today. Thank you. Uh, now I'm moving forward to um, support your journey with uh, Gemini and um, CloudFresh offers a range of services to ensure a smooth and secure implementation for you. And uh, we are excited to offer you a special opportunity. Please scan this QR code to get a uh, free trial and for, for Gemini and unlock a 20% discount. And this is a great opportunity to test it out and uh, see um, firsthand the benefits. And uh, we have now uh, reached the Q&A session. This is your chance to ask questions you may have about Google Workspace, Gemini, anything we have discussed today. We don't have a lot of time, but I think we can provide some answers for you. And at the uh, beginning of our webinar, uh, we received the question, um, how Google Workspace integrate with Microsoft products? Uh, Ilya, could you please share your thoughts on this? Sure. So uh, the, you know, in quotes, it was with the SharePoint, which is the interesting question here. Yeah, because we have the kind of comparison with the Google Drive, for example, and the Google Workspace provides you with everything to smoothly switch from the SharePoint, for example, to Google Workspace, right? And one of these feature is uh, connector, yeah, connector which can connect the SharePoint with Google Workspace, and then you will be able to search with Google Cloud Search, for example, which is the part of the some business and enterprise, yeah? This is the tool where you can find everything in your organization as an administrator or as a person who have an access to this tool. And you can search not only in Google Workspace, but with this connector directly in your SharePoint, right? So you have some kind of reverse compatibility with the SharePoint, but still in your Google Workspace environment. This is one of the feature, yeah? It's a bunch of them, it's a lot of them, and especially regarding the third party vendors who provide some integrations, but Google has everything for you to smoothly migrate to the Google Workspace from like any, almost any Google, uh, almost any Microsoft, uh, for example, uh, system. Yeah, it's not, not only about the Microsoft, it's about the many other vendors as well, including your on-premise infrastructure. So this is a pretty short answer to this question. Uh, all right, and I see this is a lot of question about the Gemini, so uh, it's more for Victoria, I guess. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Leon. Uh, okay, so we can see question about Gemini licenses. Are Gemini licenses included with the Google Workspace Enterprise Plus subscription? Uh, no, all the Gemini licenses, as Dom mentioned, those are the add-ons. So there are two ways. There's Gemini Business and uh, Gemini Enterprise. So it's just depending which version you're going to go for. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, are users' requests uh, used to train the Gemini model who um, limitedly owns the results that Gemini pro uh, produces? Question. So yep. I can answer that. I don't know if you remember, there was this very busy slide that Dom showed about data privacy. So it actually mentions the customer data kind of boundary. That's where all the prompts are staying. They're never getting to Google. We don't use them to train our models. They're on within your reach and you have control over them. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so, and um, question about Gemini again. Is Gemini Advanced hooked up to the internet or uh, is it a base of uh, knowledge that has everything up to a certain date? Sorry, I muted myself and I couldn't unmute. Uh, so normally all the models would be 
until a certain date. But what happens with all the generative models out there, not only Gemini, they're being retrained with the newer data all over and tweaked and improved. So I would say simple answer is no, but in the longer term it is. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense um, because it's it's continuously being improved. Thank you, thank you. And um, the last question about um, is features available in Cyprus? So as far as I know, none of the features are like limited by a location. It's, it's more of a case of the language availability, which we mentioned on before. Uh, so they should be available in Cyprus with no problem. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, sorry, I want to add one thing uh, to the previous question regarding the access to the internet. Maybe it's not like direct answer, but maybe Victoria will comment. So the Google released in the recent notes uh, in the update block. Uh, also advise you to check this out uh, that the Gemini app will uh, provide you with the links of the sources they found the information from, right? Yeah, yeah, this is the cool feature uh, you have, and probably you you could not have, you know, in the diff in the other different models. So this is the cool good one. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Ilya, it's a great call out. I I forgot to show it because it's one of my favorite features. Because sometimes when I ask it to help me generate stuff, I'm not sure if it's correct. You know, let's say I'm asking for steps or I don't know some specific data. So there is a button when you just basically say confirm the answers with Google or something like this. I don't remember the name exactly, but it will highlight the, 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 the sentences in green and then will show you the link where it got the results from. So let's say you want to reference your answer or if you're generating an email or something and you just want to link it in, you can just go ahead directly because that's the source. Great, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Uh, we hope you found the session informative and useful. If you have any further questions, uh, feel free to reach um, out to us via this email. I wrote it in our chat. And uh, we wish you a great day and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks, bye. Then, bye-bye.